Kaur. I, Prena Bora, the assistant teacher of St. Joseph's Convent High Secondary School, Tej Four, am privileged to be the moderator of today's webinar. I wholeheartedly welcome each and every one of you to our first ever virtual meet on online safety. This webinar is organized by the VDAS members of St. Joseph's Convent High Secondary School, Tejpur. VDAS International is an international voluntary association that operates through the young people to promote voluntary service as well as protect human rights, especially for children and women. Today we have with us Professor S.K. Sinha, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Tejpur University, to grace us by his presence as a main speaker. We also have with us our principal, Sister Emilia Chapoha, who will be there with us all throughout our session as a pillar of strength and support. Then we do have with us uh, our superior, Sister Kaini Maria, and our vice principal, Sister Melia Alexander, with us. Your presence, dear sisters, surely mean a lot to us. Now we shall begin our session with an opening prayer, as we all believe that prayer ensures the auspiciousness and well being of any event. I would not like to take the privilege to invite our superior, Sister Kaini Maria, to kindly lead the opening prayer. Over to you, Sister Kaini Maria. Thank you. Good evening, Professor S.K. Siha, Sister Emilia, the principal, Sister Mary, the vice principal, sisters, teachers, and my dear children, the participants of their webinar online safety for emerging students. Before we begin this important meeting, let us turn to God, our loving Father, and place ourselves into his loving hands so that he may accompany each one of us to the course of this meeting. God, our loving Father, we thank you for this beautiful evening and the opportunity you have given us today to have this meeting. And we entrust ourselves to you and implore your blessings upon us so that we may participate this meeting attentively and profit by it. We also pray that you may be with our resource person, Professor S.K. Sinha, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Tezpur University, and all the organizers. May the Lord be with us all. Amen. I wish each one of you all the best and may God bless you. Thank you, Sister Kaili Maria, for giving us this beautiful moment to pray and seek God's blessing so that we have a wonderful session ahead. Actually, I'd like to mention that this session, today's session is a need of the hour. Uh, amidst the nationwide lockdown, almost all the educational institutions are depending more or less on online modes of educating the students in order to maintain the continuity of education. And because of this, our young students, basically the youths, are more or less seen uh, with their mobile phones all the time busy with their tabs, their cell phones, their mobile phones. So here comes the point to worry about, especially kids, teenagers, and the youths or the people who are a little less computer or internet literate uh, become prone to harmful online scams or online activities. So today we are basically going to discuss about online safety for emerging students. Without further delay, I would like to proceed. Now with great honor and respect, I would like to introduce the person whose sheer dedication and motivation have resulted in today's webinar. 
a leader is one who leads the path to the impossible and takes the one who follows to great heights. We are really privileged to have our principal, Sister Emilia Chopoha, as our leader. It would be injustice for us to proceed without calling our respected principal, Sister Emilia Chopoha, who is our constant uh, strength and support and a source of motivation. I cordially invite Sister Emilia to give a welcome speech to each and every one of us present here, as I'm pretty sure all are eagerly waiting to hear words of welcome from you, dear sister. I do invite Sister Emilia to introduce our honorable speaker of today's webinar. Over to you, Sister Emilia. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Prena. Dear Professor Smriti Kumar Sinha, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Tezpur University, teachers and my dear students, a very good evening to you all. As we gathered this beautiful evening amid the lockdown, I am pleased to welcome all of you to the webinar organized by the Vedas members of our school, St. Joseph's Convent High Secondary School, Tejpur. We have been posed with a challenge by COVID-19, yet technology has truly gifted us with the ability to connect with each other, even if we are miles apart. Therefore, with great pleasure, I welcome each and every one of you to this virtual meet. To welcome is to show honor. To welcome is to establish integrity. I feel happy and blessed to deliver the words of welcome and also introduce our guest speaker of today's webinar. Professor S.K. Sinha is presently the Dean School of Engineering at Tejpur University. Born in Assam on 8th October 1962. He did his MSc in Physics from Gauhati University and PhD in Computer Science from Tejpur University in 2001. He is a highly qualified academician with vast experience in the administrative service at Tejpur University, Gauhati University, and beyond. If I have to give his detailed profile, I am afraid the time allotted to me is not enough. Therefore, I will only highlight his brief profile and the details of his achievements and contributions can be browsed from the internet. Professor S.K. Sinha is not only the professor, dean, director, but also member, working president, and webmaster in the areas of web technology, web service, computational linguistics, network security, social network analysis, and theory of computation. He started off his career at the program, as the programmer in the Department of Computer Science, Gauhati University. Then lecturer, senior lecturer, reader, and professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Tejpur University. He was also the researcher, sub-research, security and trust group, sub-labs, Sophia Antipolis, France. He is also a guide to the PhD scholars of which four completed. He has written a number of journal articles, authored and co-authored several books and research papers in the field of computer science and engineering. The theme of today's webinar is urgent, and I feel it is the need of the hour. The world has seen a scary future with COVID-19. 
This webinar is to ignite the young minds of our students to be safe online. I am very sure that Professor S.K. Sinha will be sharing with us his expert opinion and advice on today's topic, online safety for emerging students. With this, I invite all my dear young students to give your full attention and take in as much as you can. Thank you and all the very best. Thank you, thank you. Over to you, the moderator, Ms. Prerna. Thank you, dear sister. I'm sure all our participants are boosted up by hearing such lovely words of welcome from you, dear sister. Again, here I'd like to mention a very important point. Like nowadays, from the moment we wake up till the time we go back to sleep, we all are addicted towards internet. Be it social media, be it online gaming or reading stuffs online, we all are hooked onto it. Now it is internet is regarded as the necessary evil of modern times. The increasing popularity of internet has made us or has uh, made it important for us to understand the importance of cyber safety and why should we be safe online. Without further ado, I'd like to hand over the virtual mic or the virtual platform to our honorable speaker, uh, Professor S. K. Sinha for giving his valuable talk on today's topic, online safety for emerging students. In the same time, I expect full attention from my dear participants. All the young students are expected to listen to our honorable speaker, Professor S. K. Sinha attentively, okay? With this, I hand over the platform to Professor S. K. Sinha. Over to you, sir. The platform is. Ah, on thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, all my respected teachers and my dear students uh, attending this webinar. I feel privileged to talk to young uh, students, and I'm told the students are from. A class six to class eight level. So class five. Uh, I own sorry, class sorry, five sir, to yes. eight students. Class five to eight, yes. Yeah, sir. class five to eight. So basically, they are very uh, pretty young. So I'll try to make the talk uh, uh, a bit like a storytelling. Okay, so that they enjoy it. Yes, sir. They the love thing, to hear you. Yeah. Thing is that uh, I am introduced as a professor, as a dean, as actor, writer, all these things. But actually, I myself am happy to introduce myself as a teacher. And I love to teach. And I know teaching is a profession which is not only a service uh, like uh, in, in return of money and all these things. It's a love for interacting with beautiful young minds of the country and exchange our ideas uh, with them. And that is what is called the teaching. And I know my teaching career started in university and still it is in, I have no experience of teaching in schools, but I personally found it's a tough job to teach in schools than teaching in universities. Because uh, I have last around 30 years, I have been teaching in uh, university, but I found myself that it's really teaching the young children is a tougher job, tougher than teaching in university. And I tested it. It's my personal story I am telling. For example, so, I am uh, I'm very fond of mathematics. I myself think that I know a little bit of mathematics and because computer science is basically a mathematical science. So it's based on mathematics, even though application of computer may be in different fields uh, in our life, in different domains of life. But basically, internally, it's a mathematical science. And uh, the paper I teach on theoretical computer science is completely mathematical. Now, 
with this when i went to my native village and i try to interact with the students in of the school where i studied the village school and i request all the teachers all professors around the world or around in india at least you give back something to the village or the school where from you are you are an alumni and so if you are a teacher try to uh, interact with the students of your school where you studied and so with this endeavor i uh, normally visit whenever i go home i visit my village school interact with the students and most of the time i found that is uh, vacation time and my head teacher of the uh, primary school where i studied was my teach my is my elder sister so uh i found that she was teaching mathematics so i tried to interact with the students i tried to uh teach them the concepts of some mathematics like uh, lcm gcd and all this how this can be applied but believe me being a professor in the university i could not communicate properly the concept to the students young very young children okay that means my pedagogy i, I think children may not understand the way of teaching is not the way i i i am trained in then same concept when my sister told them in a different pedagogy they understood it they he, she communicated very easily okay so i don't remember but the thing is that we multiply uh we say three digit number by three digit number then we start from the right and leave one blank and then shift and then again one sh shift by one place and then add i ask why do we do it can it be multiplied from the left to right direction if it is possible why it is possible and how it can be done so these are the basic to understand try to understand the concept of multiplication whether they understand or not okay but i could not communicate properly but my team, my uh, sister elder sister could communicate so easily within a uh, second within minute then i found teaching in primary level is the toughest job teaching in school may be a bit easier and the easiest maybe in teaching in university because they are matured students that's my feeling and i enjoy teaching and so i i am a teacher basically a teacher forget about all other introductions and i am also a learner because everybody is a learner there is no end to learning i am also a student i am a learner okay and then i remember very well one of my university teacher when i was a student used to say learn is such a verb in english whose past tense and past participles are available only in dictionary but in real life it is always present continuous so learn learning learning is a continuous process everybody is learning till death or till uh, the consciousness consciously we are learning so it's a continuous process so every teacher here whether it is the university teacher school teacher or any form of teacher we are all learners so we are all students lifelong learners so learning is such an uh, interesting uh, thing and all teachers are learners similarly teachers are not necessarily the human beings who communicate concepts who communicate who imparts knowledge to the student we may learn from anything whether it's a living or a non living object like for example we may learn many things from our nature from our natural 
the objects like uh, flower, river, and all these things. Even a small uh, object like this pencil. This pencil, from this pencil, we can learn a lot. You see, this pencil has a color. It has an wooden, these, these things. That is not important. The color of the pencil is not important. Color or the thing which is there, wooden thing with pencil, that is not important. What is important is the graphite rod which is there. With, that is the important thing. Similarly, a student, what is her complexion, whether she is tall or short, slim or fat, that makes no difference. What is important is the intellect inside you, the student, inside you. That is more important. So we can learn now, learn from this wood pencil many things. You know, these wood pencil, wherever it touches, it leaves a mark. It leaves a positive mark. Okay. Similarly, every student should learn this from the wood pencil. Whatever you do, whatever study you do, whatever work you do, whatever hobby you are doing, leave a positive mark. And the wood pencil is such humble that it obeys obediently the hand which is guiding. This hand may be the hand of the teacher. This hand may be the hand of your mother, your father, or anybody else. Okay, which, who is guiding you and accordingly you are obeying whatever is instructed to this obedience we can learn from this again uh, this wood pencil is so humble if it makes a mistake it allows an eraser to erase this mistake and write it so it's so humble it's not adamant okay even after doing a mistake it's not adamantly argue uh, like this. It learns if it is a is the wrong thing, then it allows the others to correct it, erase it and correct it. And now this sharpener. Sharpener is your teacher. When this sharpener, main objective of a sharpener is to sharpen your intellect inside you. The process may look like when I when we were a student, we also felt like that, that, okay, uh, it's sharpening. It may be painful or sometimes uh, this is uh, not so these things, but ultimately the sharpener's objective is very positive. It wants to sharpen the whatever intellect you have, okay, like this. So basically we learn so many things from such wood pencil. So is it not my teacher? So but definitely, because it teaches me many things. Similarly, the computer is also a good teacher, a very good teacher. We can learn many things from computer, not the information it delivers, but the way it functions uh, that a computer, and I need not explain what is that computer because everybody, every student is now aware of what is that computer and all these things. They also study in their uh, class level, class level. Now, you see computer is such a thing, such a, a device or a machine. If you give a computer a job, the computer performs that job with full potential. If you give an assignment to the computer, computer completes the assignment, completes the job in expected time 
and gives you back, submits this, the result of the assignment uh, to, to you. That means computer is obedient and whatever work, let it be a small work or a huge work, it does with full potential. And it's very punctual in submitting the assignments. Like we can learn from it. When an assign home assignment or any assignment is given to a student, okay, you if you work on that like a computer with full potential and complete it within time, then definitely that is the way, that is the mantra to be successful in life. Full potential, full concentration, and in time. Okay, that we can learn from computer. So basically for all of us, computer is a teacher. Now let me come to the uh, very interesting part of the, uh, my storytelling. Okay, so the next phase of the story. You know, computer is very powerful, very capable of solving problems. Within nanosecond, it can solve many problems that we know. We have learned from our book and we have seen how fast it can work. Mm. So we can say that computer is very potential. Uh, but before uh, internet came into being, computer was not much used in the society. It was used in laboratories. It was used in certain academic institutions or some offices. Uh, general people were not aware of the, uh, the potential of the computer. And before, and also we had a technology much before computer technology, and that was communication technology like telephone and other devices. It was a uh, very potential communicating uh, tech communication technology. It was also developed. But these two bachelors are married. It's a successful marriage. And all of us attended that marriage ceremony in the last century. That means computational technology, computer technology married to communication technology and that successful marriage is blessed by their first child and that is called internet and internet is the result of successful marriage between two potential technologies computational technology and communication technology and this computer network and you have studied in the book, might most probably, or may not, you will be studying in class ninth level or tenth level. Uh, that when they are married, we call that is a computer network. And a small computer network, which are very closely connected, they are called local area networks. Okay, that like in Assamese, we call suburi. That is the habitation like a small habitation or a village. And now when distant computers, like one computer here and another computer in New Delhi, if they can communicate through a particular a network, we call that as one, okay, or third wide area network. And when all the wide area networks are connected by a gigantic network, that network is called the that network is called the internet. Now the thing is, so we understand what is internet. And now in the internet made the whole world into a small village. That means right at this moment you see, I am sitting on Tichpur University campus. Many of the students are spread across uh, the district called Sunitpur in many places, but we are together in one place. This is possible because of internet and the services over internet. 
and one service all of us use that is messaging services like email another service which made us possible to do all this inter this work is called the white world white web and world wide web connects the information it builds a network of information on the top of internet network of computers so it's a network which are connected so this all the information in the world are now connected and sitting in in a home at your know, home place or comfort you can access any of the information that is the beauty of this world wide web and uh, timothy barnes lee developed this concept and the interesting part is this world wide web is the result of a successful divorce in computer science divorces are also successful how the content of the world wide web is divorced from presentation that means irrespective of what platform you are using what platform means the computer operating system whatever it is all from you are these things content will be there presentation may be different it may be different okay you can change in your browser you can change Uh, the settings in your these things, but content will remain. It will freely move from one place to other. So if the content is, uh, I am not going in detail. When we teach world technology, we try to find out that that how to encode the content and how to encode the presentation styles differently and can combine together. Now the thing is, these World Wide Web. has brought about an equilibrium state of knowledge earlier what happened was that if a knowledge is there somewhere somebody is sitting in the remote village or remote corner of the country was not aware of that information the result of the experiment so the because information gap was wide so because of that he or she lost a lot of thing knowledge was not accessible to the a uh, remote village guard or a, ta a remote town guard okay so this gap was there this internet or the service called world wide web might mind it world wide web is not equal to internet it's not equal okay internet is the infrastructure world wide web is a service okay it's an application on the top of internet so because of this now if a new knowledge is developed in any corner of the world immediately it can be shared all over the world so this information gap knowledge gap is reduced earlier only isolated places were rich in knowledge like uh, easy like greece india ancient india and other places where it was cultivated now it is not the situation even sitting at in tejpur we can access the information uh which is generated in usa that is the beauty of this so an equilibrium state of knowledge is developed because of world wide web so now on the top of this now many more uh, applications are developed uh, like your uh, banking transactions are developed on this social network we call facebook okay or twitter or youtube or say online teaching online learning all these things every domain of our life is now influenced by our internet and the world wide this technology computer technology and you know that uh, we the people now live in a physical society it has all strengths all beauties in physical society it has its also its problems are there in physical society similarly in virtual society or digital society has a lot of advantages at the same time a lot of problems are also there it has a problem it has a lot of problems also there 
and we will now uh, discuss uh, some of them which is very relevant to you as i said i have given you a rosy picture of internet and world wide web and its influence impact on our daily life just like we inhale oxygen from air exhale carbon dioxide and in this way from the air from nature similarly today from morning to evening we inhale we take information from internet we also put information to internet it just like our everyday respiration continuously we are consuming the information from internet and so it's a part of our life and you know that along with oxygen not only pure oxygen comes even carbon dioxide dust particles and many other uh, unwanted elements also come in, enter to our uh, lungs or our body but we have a mechanism to protect it we have a mechanism to excel it okay similarly this particular uh, world digital world or we can the virtual world is beautiful and its impact is high it contributes a lot it connects us and has made entire world a small village but at the same time it also has the similar problems like real society at vulnerabilities problems are there crimes are also there just like uh, in the real society criminals are there there are also people who use this space with criminal intention okay so we should be very aware of so we should be very careful about it and for that you need you know first thing is the technology provides us certain level of security which your device it may be a mobile device it may be your tablet it may be your laptop or a desktop but definitely there is a device security devices are the security uh, things are in place to protect you but that's not enough like for example wherever you want to work okay whenever you want to work with a computer somewhere in some website or these things you want to go whether it is a banking website or a learning portal or anywhere then what happens is that you have to enter a login and password that is the first level of uh security that to make to keep you a to give you a safety net now it is asking you are you the person whose login name is this are you the person do you know the secret password okay just like today i entered through a password then if you know the password then only you can enter to this this is the very uh, primitive level of security called the authentication but you know this is not very strong so, uh, the password may be known or it may be deciphered by some mechanism it may be so it is the weakest form of uh, the, uh, the authentication so what is the stronger form so along with the passcode you will have some physical device just like atm card and a pin so it will be stronger than that even stronger will be combine these secret knowledge and a device okay smart smart device like the card and also your biometrics like your eyelashes your okay pattern in your retina or thumbnail impression if you combine all these things that will be the strongest uh, first authentication device for you but for all services these are not necessary for for our learning purpose for our many of the purposes login and password is sufficient but only thing there we should be very careful is that part what should be kept secret it should not be shared once it is shared somebody else may impersonate 
the person okay giving a login and the password okay so there lot of things may happen if your password is leaked so <coughs> all the students who are listening to this lecture for attending uh, even your uh, classrooms and others you are given a password or if you have a email account or a social network account in facebook and others okay you may not have at this age maybe uh, it should be guided so then you should have should not reveal your password to anybody okay you should be kept secret except your guardians okay because leaking a password means actually you are opening the flash gate of to uh, the criminal activities okay now thing is that the internet or the world wide web web is just like a window to the whole world you are opening you are opening a whole window to the whole world is the window is open through this window you can visit the entire world you can access the information and learn many things but the mind it this window is open through this open window not only information and very valuable information will come to your home you might have closed the door of your physical home at night <coughs> okay your windows are closed so you are in the safe okay custody or uh, safety net but you are if you keep the op, keep the window off through your mobile if you keep the window of world wide web open then through this open window a lot of criminal activities criminals may enter your house home it will affect you at the, not only you entire family may be affected so this window be careful of opening the digital window through your social network through your mobile okay unnecessarily don't keep it open that means you should be meticulous in using the uh, mobile device for accessing the information even for learning purpose also uh, once your class is over you should not use it okay and particularly for girls don't keep the window of your mobile to the digital world okay unnecessarily because through smss through messages through emails through many other devices and uh, people may disturb you and you may be vulnerable to many of the attacks which are possible in physical world it may be possible in digital world and ultimately it may create a psychological stress a lot of consequent problems particularly for girls so i suggest first thing is don't use mobile or your internet connected devices unless it is necessary and when it is open and don't forget also to close it as soon as your job is over don't keep it open particularly don't uh, access these things during night time okay because the criminal activities criminals try to reach you through their digital window during night time because they know you are alone they may be vulnerable there are many cases or called called the cyber crimes okay these are happening and the girls or not only girls boys and particularly girls are harassed and this creates a lot of psychological problems and consequence will be in the impact or effect in their life so this is the first suggestion i would like to uh, give and another thing is suppose sometimes a beautiful birthday card or a beautiful christmas card or a beautiful picture of your favorite actor and actress some unknown person is given to your mobile it may be the picture of amitabh bachchan it may be the picture of aishwarya rai 
or a beautiful picture of say Brahmaputra river and maybe having some messages on happy birthday on these things. And as a human being, we welcome it, we appreciate this gesture, but this may be a channel of reaching to your device and damaging the device that is called steganography in technical term. That means when a picture is sent to you from an unknown resource source, then that picture is beautiful and you can print it, you can enjoy it or uh, these things. But that picture may contain a secret code which will also be downloaded in your device and attack your device and steal the information like your login, password or any secret information you have stored in your mobile device. So this is called uh, steganography in security. Okay. So even if the picture, this is the how the people all over the world try to enter through the open window to the premises, home premises and disturb the uh, users and steal the information from the other. And not only that, through the messages, through pictures or some digital object, viruses may also travel. Yes, your operating system or a device may have protection up to certain level. But always if it is not updated, so new, new viruses, it may not be able to identify and then uh, it may damage your these things. You know, there are many types of viruses. I'm not going to discuss it today and that is not the topic. But I am telling you, through the open window as a very positive gesture with an envelope of something which is very positive, very uh, negative viruses, worms may enter to your device and disturb your activities and disturb you also. For example, uh, one very important thing that is called the um, bootstrap, uh, bootstrap viruses. Uh, it's like that they know that when you open the or boot the device, your computer, your operating system will be starting from a particular point that is called the bootstrap. And the viruses will be sitting there very silently. When you boot the, when you load the operating system, along with the operating system, it will come to the main memory and then disturb the work or uh, infect the uh, entire um, machine. It is just like that. You have seen that uh, during your flood season, Many people you might have seen, they throw the fish net to catch fishes, but they keep a rope tied to their hand. Okay. And when they pull, they throw this uh, rope, they pull the entire net. It, it emerges slowly from the water. And that is the bootstrap. And you might have seen that some frogs, intelligent frogs, they are not inside the net, but they are sitting outside the net and come up, 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 up the water and then jump to the uh, bank. Okay, these are viruses. These are unwanted things. So along with when you are booting the entire system, unwanted viruses may also come and then enter your machine. So be careful of, so my suggestion would be, even though these are attractive, don't download anything, particularly games. Throw games because you know the children love games, to play games. So if somebody suggests, oh, you this game is very good, and then you download it without verifying the sources, without uh, trustworthy uh, sources, don't try to download anything in your machine. So, it will create problem. It may come in the form of a beautiful friend, but it will damage you. So be careful in downloading games, downloading anything, even the study material. 
you see if you open up give a topic in google then you will find that a lot of material come some materials are really good and these are from authentic sources forget about correct or wrong but along with that a lot of advertisements comes and along with advertisements some viruses or worms may enter to you if the source is and not a trustworthy website so even if it is an educational material even if it is an entertainment material don't download anything just for just for the sake of a game or a uh, you say uh, for just as a game or this thing don't download anything has uh, instantly first verify the source whether the source is authentic or not okay then only you verify and also there will be uh, some attacks like phishing attacks and other the message will come to you in the form of an sms it's a very beautiful message you may receive either as an email offering you something and asking you if you are interested then you click here or reply from your machine okay unless you verify these things the source and it is a known source your known person don't do it okay because this may lead you leave you lead you to a vulnerable spot and where a lot of damages may happen so the world is beautiful digital world is beautiful at the same time it is full of criminal activity so we must be aware particularly students of this age group so i suggest okay you use mobile device you use for learning purpose or these things but under the strict supervision of your uh, parents and teachers because you may not know which device or which website is uh, trustworthy or which uh, is not trustworthy your teachers may know your parents may know okay so before downloading anything or reacting replying something which is an uh, a message from an unknown source you consult your parent show it to your parent otherwise a lot of damage may happen in between so particularly i i am told that girl students are here listening to me so this is particularly very important for the girls for example let me give you an example what how a phishing attack also after even we have a firewall firewall you do not have firewall means beyond your device you have your operating system have some security devices entire university we have a firewall okay so that whatever tries to enter throw anything from outside it checks and also if it is doubtful it will not deliver and some whatever if somebody wants to visit even uh, some unwanted website from our university that is also recorded and that is there. so firewall gives us this facility even after that smart attackers hackers may cross this firewall for example one day i received a beautiful email from microsoft microsoft offered me or intends to offer me a job and the offer is based on my profile that i work on this this area and i have published a lot of papers research papers and they are impressed on that and i also worked in france every fact and figures are correct in the mail so if you are interested to take this offer please reply this mail so that further communications can be done what a beautiful offer with a big package i received from the mail from microsoft but i had a doubt whether is it from microsoft how will you check everything is there but when i check the mail where from domain name where from the mail has come this is not from microsoft domain it is not microsoft.com 
it is something else it was from somewhere in africa so it's a dangerous game if i would have replied i would have communicated they would might have asked they would have asked me some money to deposit and all these things this is happening so important thing is when you uh, use computer and access internet access been uh, different websites for different purposes for learning purpose as well as for this things first you check whether the domain is or the website is really trustworthy or not okay then for depending trustworthy we can compute how much trustworthy this there is a mechanism that is called computational trust i produced phd student uh, re, uh, did research under me on computational trust it's a very complex thing i am not going to tell you for i may give you an example suppose you want to buy something uh, buy a book or buy a mobile or any other small uh, say toy you want to buy from online store then if you order it to amazon you will trust amazon because from the history of transaction amazon has the trustworthiness value high so you can order it in amazon amazon will come if you are not satisfied you will return back so amazon's trustworthiness value is high but it may not be true for all online devices so if you order it to some other uh, untrustworthy online store your thing may not be you might have paid but your device your uh, uh, the thing you have ordered will not reach you even if it reaches is it may be a wrong thing which is not unexpected thing may come so trustworthiness is a different area it is not uh, like security okay it's a different game just like we have social trust in our normal society to trust somebody some organization similarly digital organization digital uh, websites and others also have a way to compute the trustworthiness so always you download or interact with the trustworthy sites download the things from trustworthy sites that is what i would like to tell uh, in this uh, webinar that uh, now education particularly you know because of covid 19 pandemic many things are changing in our life it has already changed and it will be changing but there are some changes are positive and some changes may not be like that for example entire nature for nature it is a blessing because because of our um, uh, civil modern civilization and uh, many things we did our environment was polluted and all these things because of covid 19 nature has went back resilient went back to a stable state with a lot of resilience but this is not happening with other systems like your education in education now uh, what happened in ancient time in india students used to go to the teachers home stay there for a year called the gurukul learn it and then come back with the knowledge now during a uh, later time in british era uh, or earlier also there is something called school where teacher and the student meet at the same time and then learn from the teacher and go back home in the middle and uh, this is happening the classroom teaching now covid 19 post covid 19 situation is that the we we'll, we are now banking on online teaching and learning process in this teaching and learning process the students are in home comfort and they are home and teacher is reaching to the door of the uh, student knocking the door and delivering the knowledge at the doorstep of course not physically but digitally and so it is a quite different paradigm quite different situation now um, this will continue 
I tell you uh, that online teaching will be a part of our life. Online learning will be a part of our life in the coming days also. For the pandemic situation, it is there. But even after that also, it is not going to go away. That means it will stay here as a complementary channel of teaching and learning. That means you are learning now compulsorily as on, online, but everything cannot be taught online. You know, the practical things are there. There are many benefits of face-to-face -face interaction and hand-to-hand -hand the practice and all these things. Now, this may not be possible, even if it is possible in virtual laboratories and other which are coming up. It may not be like that for all, but it will complement. Complement in the sense something uh, may be possible in online and interaction may be minimized for face-to-face, -face, like practically you do in the class, in the laboratory. So online teaching will be there. Now in the online teaching problem is, now you see the how your teachers are dedicated. Even though you are now locked in the home and your home comfort, teachers are trying their level best to reach you and continue the teaching process through digital mode. And many of the teachers, including myself, we are not acquainted so much with this technology. And they are learning the technology, learning the technology so that they can deliver the knowledge to your doorstep, to you. So I, we, we can expect after so much investment of time, energy, and attitude, dedication, and a positive attitude of teachers, the learner should also have positive attitude. They should eagerly welcome the digital teacher when it reaches through your uh, classroom, digital classroom like your Zoom or any other this platform. Because teachers are now struggling to learn and delivering to you. You should understand that it's not so easy. A lot of for uh, delivering online is not so easy. But still, to continue the process of teaching and learning, they are doing. So you welcome and also express your gratitude, not only the students, but also parents. There may be problems, there may be uh, interruptions because of technology and other. Please bear with your uh, teachers, principals, uh, administrators of your school. They are uh, trying their level best to reach you, uh, okay, with their um, basket of knowledge and receive it with that spirit, okay, from them. And also you can interact and use your time properly. Uh, this is the right time now. You can enjoy learning, teaching and learning online. At the same time, you can also utilize the time for your creative pursuits like art, sports, games, or whatever, or uh, reading material, the co-curricular activities, both physical or digital, whatever is possible. So this is a right time to use productively. And I think um, I tried my level best um, to uh, convey uh, some of the concerns of uh, learning, teaching and learning uh, in this uh, situation. And we human beings should be able to adapt with the changes. Otherwise, we will be obsolete. Now, at the end, I would like to say two or three things. Like, in some of, uh, I would like to say that you have a small handheld device like mobile or a tablet or a laptop. But through this device, your teaching and learning things are happening. That means your knowledge, huge knowledge, you are lucky that in the internet on a particular topic, if you just Google, you will got a lot of information. That was not the situation 20 years back. You are fortunate. We are unfortunate when we were students. I used to, I remember, when I was a student of class 9 standard, 
in a village school where I studied, there was only one copy of mathematics book in the headmaster's room. No other copies are available because it was the new course. And we had to bring the book, not home, but take the book from the headmaster's room, copy the exercises, read it there, submit it before the school is closed. That's how we learn uh, the mathematics or many of the subjects. So resources are not available. Now, because of internet, because of this, you have a, a wide basket of quality material. Only problem is now over information. That means how to choose the relevant topic, how to choose the quality literature, because whatever is available in internet may not be correct. It may be wrong, totally wrong concepts may be given because there is no gatekeeper, no verifier. So many of the things, which one is correct, which is wrong, your teacher, your parents can guide you. No, this is correct, you study this. This is correct, don't do it. Otherwise, some misconceptions may prop in. So the thing is that through the same small device called the smartphone, you that is a device for teaching and learning. Now, it is also the device for entertainment and game, gaming. It is also the device for marketing or shopping. You see the same device, small device. It's also the device through which criminal activities are in full swing and that may enter your home premise. So be careful, okay? And whatever you do, don't react it immediately out of emotion to unknown messages and try to consult with your these things. If required, uh, you can uh, report it to police or your teachers, they will take the measures so that uh, your vulnerability, possibly vulnerable situation is uh, mitigated. That's what I'd like to say today. And uh, at lastly, I'd like to tell only one thing that if you read the history of civilization of human civilization, you will find that in agricultural age, that is in old time, those people who settled on the banks of rivers, they prospered. And the places prospered, the villages prospered to towns, cities. Take Guwahati, take Paris, take London, take any other city today. Earlier is your villages on the banks of river. Why that happened? And those who settled on the top of tops of say uh, hills, they are far away from the civilizational bus. So this happened because happened because the uh, network of communication in agricultural age was the river network, natural river network. So those people who settled on the hilltops, they missed the civilization developmental bus. And those who settled on the banks of rivers, they prospered to cities, their, their prosperity development is high. Now in industrial age, when the people made road network all over the world and people who settled down on uh, or uh, on uh, near the roads okay they settled down and access the ne road network their prosperity uh, level is higher than those who are away from the river uh, road network in industrial age now this to today is the information age in this information age those communities those communities, those families, those individuals who do not connect to internet or those embrace or adopt to internet, they will be lagging behind and they will miss the civilization bus. So this is not much the problem for the youngsters because uh, they are already acquainted, they are connected with internet and all these things. But particularly uh, middle-aged people or many of the people, 
they shy away till today to use internet okay but internet if it is properly used it may give, bring bring prosperity and knowledge okay and we should be careful also uh, from the internet and the services provided to internet from security reasons is the similar security threats which we get in physical world similar is the situation in the uh, digital world so we should be very careful we should take measure and your basic cons uh, i mean the fifth sense sixth sense that is very important that common sense is important even if you don't know the technology even if you don't know these things but only thing is only after verification you interact or you consume whatever is available whether the information is correct or wrong that verification is required whether the source is trustworthy or not that is important particularly it is important for the children or the learners with these few words uh, i would like to conclude my lecture part and if there are some questions i'll be happy to answer thank you thank you so much sir thank you so much for your valuable talk we are really enlightened by your words and i'm very sure that our young participants have also learned a lot the internet has indeed turned our existence upside down it has revolutionized communication to such an extent that nowadays it is regarded as the most preferred medium of everyday communication today even small children are seen engrossed in their mobiles and uh, laptops or tabs so i am very sure your talk will really make them think twice before surfing any content in the internet so thank you so much sir we are really honored to have you here okay so now comes the most uh, interesting part of today's webinar that is the interaction moment i can see we have pretty good number of questions with us and now okay. we'll take we will we'll take some time to answer uh, sir i'd like yeah. to ask you uh, will i put forward all the questions together or will i ask the questions one by one 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 okay okay sir one of our uh, participant is asking like are online payment apps safe to use or what are the basic rules to be followed while using online payment apps are they safe yeah yeah uh, you see uh, just like um, the online uh, offline uh, physical transactions as i said the there are two things are coming first thing is uh, safety and security of transaction as well as the trustworthiness okay so if you download the app okay for payment uh, apps from from the authentic sources stores like the state bank they have their app and that's put it in the trustworthy site where from you download okay and you know uh every payment through these apps okay from the app to, uh, client to the server and or uh, server to the client all are encrypted okay encrypted with very high security still there will be some vulnerabilities but maybe there as we have in a physical world problem is it lies with the literacy or the uh, users knowledge about the Uh, use of the uh, app okay now for example app always have some authentication mechanism like you are to give your login you are to do all these these things and one otp will come and then you are to enter it all these will be encrypted but if your password is leaked or if when you are typing you see password can be Uh, or the whatever you are doing now same machine same mobile where the app is there if it is vulnerable or already attacked uh, by some hackers then what will happen is that say every day you are entering the app through a particular known interface okay like if it is a state bank app or any other app 
you know the interface this logo will come and so you are now trust uh, trusting that this is the real app i am running from my mobile device now what happens interface remains the same but if the logic is already hacked then your login and password you are entering it will take that and send it to someone and someone else will also work so thing is that it depends on the culture or the awareness of the user of the uh, online transaction apps or device okay so first thing is your device you should use very meticulously unwanted unknown apps you should not this thing and very meticulous about the device sometimes you again download it the original app but i tell you this uh, online uh, payment uh, uh, transactions doing online okay these are safe these are safe and so they have played their role perfectly in designing these things i am also a man of from security but at the same time the user must follow some uh, uh, guidelines or you can say best practices then only it will be safe for example when i am typing my password through by while doing online this thing if somebody is yanking from your uh, keyboard which is displayed it can be easily seen either through a software or through a secret camera or by a human being that which uh, act uh, which uh, characters you are typing so in that way password may be leaked so be careful when you do the uh, online transaction it depends on the on the practices best practices of the client that is the user for doing the online transaction and also the reliability of the uh, bank or the financial institution which is you are transacting thank you so much sir i hope uh, the participant is quite clear okay let's move on to the next question sir uh one of our participant is asking it is said that clicking on ad clicking on ads during internet browsing is dangerous is it really so or if it is then what are the dangers clicking on yeah. ads during internet browsing yeah not only ads it may be an ad it may be a lucrative offer okay so anything comes with a lucrative offer or something okay it's not that hey, all ads are dangerous this is a wrong notion but thing is that through this beautiful ads this is steganography as i said through this beautiful apps through a lucrative uh, information some uh, uh, the, this hacking may be happen so unnecessarily don't click anywhere even the say for example there is a button in the app and ad is for beautiful uh, something which you are interested in and the logic which is that is the program which is hooked up with this button in the client side may not be communicating to the actual uh, uh, com com company you are interacting but it may give the information whatever you are entering to someone else so the hacker may be present anywhere but that doesn't mean that all the advertisements or all the things during browsing are not so you should be very careful unnecessarily don't if you see a very lucrative things and this is be careful as i said no even if it is a, a new year's greeting card from an unknown source okay that greeting card may have a beautiful flower but that image file may contain virus that may contain some worms because the code may be there which may be dangerous i am just not threatening or giving this thing it's scary only thing is the trustworthiness of the source that you have to verify or of course in many of the cases operating system or the security measures in your device will also help you in that okay not that that all ads are bad okay that will okay 
Thank you so much, sir. Next that is question. called some, sometimes uh, masquerading. Atta. Masquerading means uh, with something, it masquerades as the uh, beautiful thing, but inside is, it is called like, like Prozan. Prozan, you know, that Greek mythology, Prozan. Okay. Yes, Prozan yes. horse came as a beautiful gift, and inside there was, there were some soldiers and all these things. Similarly, uh, these attackers or hackers may send you very, as an advertisement, as a message, anything. Okay. So, because they are also more intelligent. They are also inter equally intelligent. Nah. Okay. As the security professionals. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, let's move on to the next question. Are there any precautions suggested for users who access internet on a public computer or internet cafe? Yeah. That is a place where Mm, uh, actually, uh, unless it is very much required, because okay, internet cafe you cannot avoid. You also use that. There comes the social trust. This internet ca cafe's reputation you have to check, and how much they updated their antivirus or anti um, the security safe security software are okay, and. There you are entering your login and password and then accessing your emails and all these things. Okay. And so you should be very careful that when you, even if the uh, thing is trustworthy, internet cafe from your point of view. Okay. Then also sometimes many people after doing the job, they don't log out. They just come because the thing is finished. That means your uh, inter session will be hanging and that may be vulnerable to you. Okay. So don't leave the thing, uh, close it properly. Once you log in, don't forget to log out properly and also verify before entering into any cafe. Okay. And particularly also be careful of uh, the youngers. Youngers means uh, those who will observe what you are doing by taking a, uh, through your camera, uh, your finger movements and what you are entering and all these things that can be captured very easily. Even in when you go to ATM also, the, the people, youngers may either young digitally or physically, they may young what you are typing. So you look around. And in many of the cases, particularly you, you, may, you may might have heard in Guwahati and others, they try to help. Okay, while uh, transacting from withdrawing from ATM or these things, may I help you? Is there any problem? You will withdraw maybe ten rupees or hundred rupees, and then you okay hand over uh, the uh, the this ATM and these things. After transaction is a handover, but that may not be the actual ATM you have given to him. It may be a wrong ATM. Okay, duplicate ATM, an actual ATM he may take. So these happen. There are many uh, crimes happening. So everything depends on the awareness of the user. If you do not know how to handle, take someone with you who is trustworthy, your family member or very close friend. Then only you interact. Otherwise, it is dangerous. Yes, cafes are the vulnerable spots, but all cafes are not that. You be sure of public places. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, our next question, one of our participants wants to know, like, should we use apps to earn money? Should we use apps to earn money? Earn money in which way? Like, say, um, Google ad is there uh, okay and from uh, your youtube also people are earning these are all yes, fair yes sir these are all fair uh, fair in the sense that uh, google is trustworthy so trustworthiness comes here so it's not that uh, through apps even online stores are there there are also network marketing apps are there so everything depends on the trustworthiness it's not that because you know in the coming situation 
maybe within few years almost all, 90% of the transactions in our country will be online even maybe i heard net banking maybe stopped okay instead of net banking even if it is online they may go to uh, your yeah, just apps like your you know by sbi and other so the different changes are coming and online we cannot avoid online transaction online education online these 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 online is now coming in a big way only thing is awareness training and how to use it properly that there must be a training for that for the users yes okay, okay. thank you so much sir a next question uh, are spam messages coming on our mobile dangerous or can we stop spam messages permanently yeah 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 the you know, spam messages or spam mails uh, even in nowadays uh, in case of uh, smart uh, email software they have already inbuilt they will uh, give you the alert that this is a spam maybe okay even the messages also even after that some of the smart spammers may penetrate and then successfully reach you in that case you see if the information or the message is not, not from a source you see check with the header header means um, uh, those students message is this this is message is there and that is in english or any uh, uh, language and message may be very nice message but the thing is that the headers of the message what is the route it followed where from it came everything will be available in the header as a metadata we call it this is the real data and that is called the metadata if you have doubt about the message check the metadata okay in the header and if it is not from uh, from a doubtful immediately you delete it don't interact don't press anything there okay metadata will give you just like i give an example i received a microsoft offer letter but it was not routed from started from a microsoft uh, dot over the domain registered domain it was from a, some other domain so it will be possible when you see the metadata in the in the header section yes yeah thank you so much sir Uh, now one of our student wants your suggestion right yeah. how to control uh, her uh, because she's on uh, inclined towards social media and uh, she is more with her phone nowadays so how can she control that rather yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, deviate yeah. her attention in her studies so yeah. she can just Actually, help her out yeah 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 thank you very much this is a very very relevant question today for all students including my children she is also like my child okay thing is that slowly addiction okay and if you analyze if you spend say 5 hours with your social media and other you just analyze how productive interactions how much you learn from Now this uh, investment of five hours, you will find almost nothing. It's a just a chatting and these things. Chatting, I am not saying that everything is bad, but you analyze yourself how productive you are. That means main disadvantage of social network like Facebook, and I am also a Facebook user. Okay, it's not that from young to old, all are users because this is the world which connects each other. but that is also main source of distraction many of the creative writers in the world they suggest that facebook or any social media is a powerful media to reach people and all these things are all okay but it is a main source of distraction of work okay because when you are studying and just and when you are in deep study at the same time you are sending a, me a message to your friend hello are you also um, studying what are you studying and uh, what are you doing have you seen uh, what riya chakravarti has done some message you sent and then 
obviously you will be waiting for the reaction so your concentration will now shift from your study to this so main thing is your will power should be strong when i am doing social media i will be doing for say one hour half an hour and after that i will switch off the even if it is not switched off i will not attend to everything in this way you should have a strong will and if you are weak in this then uh, this will dominate you and you will be addict just like any other addiction it will be an addiction okay so thing is that a student or a user of social media must analyze how beneficial these interactions are how with whom to interact how many friends if somebody sends a friend request will you accept a friend request you check whether you know him or her and whether it will be really a good productive friendship or not if you just for popularity for increasing some number if you think uh, accept someone as a friend that friend is an unknown friend it, it that means you are inviting vulnerability do you open your door of your house for any unknown person also then why do you open the door or the window digital window to everyone you will be vulnerable vulnerability will be increased so be careful in selecting your friends unnecessarily don't accept friend request if it is not acceptable or not known and if it is not matching with your tastes or your interests or your this thing that is the otherwise just for popularity gaining in a huge network for increasing the number of friends you are maybe inviting uh, threats and once you take a friend request accepting a friend request even if the you are not interested in what he or she is posting it will disturb you okay that is the issue in accepting friends if the friend is not matching in your taste and your ambitions or career and all these things unnecessary things they will be posting and you will be consumer of that so in uh, ultimately you will be a consumer of garbages okay my request to the student who said it's a very right question only thing is mentally strong take a bold decision when to use social media but social media is not bad i will not say that okay it is the very strongest media but how much useful it is to you when you should use it and you have a strong will power when to start and when to stop and who have to whom to friend and whom to defriend and also uh, there is no gatekeeper in social network like facebook and others twitter and other no gatekeeper if your emotional outburst or emotionally you react to something that consequence of that reaction may be long your entire family may be in danger okay so you be careful in responding to uh, that don't be very reactive first you calculate cool mind logically if you are to reply reply otherwise ignore learn the culture of ignoring and also rationally reacting to the uh, events or the messages happening all around you uh, particularly these age group students are really vulnerable in that they are emotional they are these things so we should the students parents should be very aware be very, very careful about this what he or she is doing what is the emotional states uh, transitions uh, the user is going then from that they can find out and take the measures thank you sir you are absolutely right we all should have a strong will power okay now i'd like to put forward the most frequently asked question this is a common one Uh, what are the risks of online communication risk of online communication uh, yeah actually uh, benefit and risk these are just two sides of the same coin if you do something even in business also there is no business without risk 
okay so risk and uh, uh, benefit they are two sides of the same coin so in online communication risks are there but uh, as well as benefits are also there because because of online communication now you can apply to jobs you can uh, in, uh, appear in online uh, digital uh, in interviews and and uh, getting selected for services uh, because of online communication you are now learning because online classes are going on you are putting your questions online you are getting the replies online so online communications are there risk factor is also there because if you are not communicating with the right person or the right website definitely risk will be there but this risk and cost benefit analysis you have to do yourself whether it is risky or not if it is risky don't do it okay thank you so much sir now i can see there are more and more questions coming more or less we have covered yeah. all the areas uh, sir would you like to just cover any area before a final wrap up we can just go through the questions uh, one more or less the questions yeah. are same they are repeated but still you can have a look at it once before a final wrap up uh, yeah please uh, i will not say anything just you please uh, okay okay then just give me a few minutes i'll just go through the questions once okay few students are repeatedly asking a question is it safe to use online site to study always you check the trustworthiness of the other site suppose if online materials are given from cbsc website that will be more trustworthy then other websites where cbsc materials are there okay so it depends on the reputation of the websites who are providing the information like if you download from google play any app the trustworthiness value is high but at the same time you must uh, we, might, we know even in uh, because google store they have a policy of constantly checking the whether there are hackers or this websites in the guise of good uh, app somebody is storing there and they very recently deleted 17 of them they identified so they are constantly working on behalf of us okay that's why they are trustworthy okay and you should not download unnecessarily the apps and make your mobile full of apps which are hardly you use once in your lifetime there may be vulnerability you are increasing okay and uh, so few students are asking you can just repeat it if you want how can we believe that apps are trustworthy yeah or which uh, app is that is, is uh, now nah, that is the thing i say that uh, there are methods of calculating the, the computational trust because we do not see each other no uh, like in a normal society if there is zero trust and we want to exchange uh, buy something what we do in right hand we take or we take the product in the left hand and in the right hand we uh, uh, give the money so that means there is no trust build up here but this is not possible in a digital world because with whom you are transacting he is staying somewhere else and then its trustworthiness is calculated based on its history of previous transactions and the reputations that means when you buy something from a store or anything any service then they ask you to give the rating and uh, this rating usually if you give randomly just anything you are actually not uh, co cooperating with the system okay so this reputation is calculated from such that they also know that many people will just give five star three star but there is there are mathematical models and all these things to get rid of all these type of thing too extreme and too this and take from this so similarly reputation and also the uh, the 
trust computational trust is calculated and based on that computer trust what the value is calculated there's a for example now as i said in example as an online store uh, already reputation is high from for amazon flipkart that's why we are buying from it without any hesitation even if something goes wrong they uh, they have a way of um, this thing but if you order online to some unknown store sometimes you may not get even after payment okay because their trustworthy valueness is not there so, so just like in a normal society digital society also all the participants they try to build up their trust okay that is there there are mechanisms i cannot tell to these small children because we did phd uh, trust is a very very interesting topic of research all over the world in tejpur university i started this research with some phd students and they completed phd and we have uh, journal papers published on that it's a big very complex topic just like in so social networking social networking is not just, just not for uh, not only this uh, doing uh, messaging and all this the, from the messages people are sending or exchanging we can calculate the emotional content we can calculate the public opinion out of this we can calculate we, we have algorithms how to viral how to make it more popular which our politicians are using this way or some marketing agents are using there are very beautiful mathematical models and also algorithms to do it it's not so easy and i encourage all the students who are listening if you grow up if you take up computer science as your path of study okay these are the topics like data science machine learning and social network analysis computational trust these are beautiful areas where you can uh, contribute a lot as well as you can work on that okay these are the areas yeah. okay thank you so much sir now before winding up the question and answer round i'd like just like to ask the last question like yeah from, uh, from you <laughs> no no from the students part of course uh, okay one of our participant is asking this question like yeah. uh, are the data uh, and the information that's gets stored in the google drive is it safe or they are dangerous or they can harm them in some way yeah yeah you see again the trust component comes here i am repeating the same thing these are, these are all similar technically you are putting in the cloud a cloud service providers are there and like google drive or amazon azure and there are many uh, players are there and uh, if they uh, play foul their reputation will go down okay so normally they don't play foul so you are trusting that's why you are putting it in the google drive but there are dangers long term hmm, analysis when critics are doing for example it's just like another way of another path of digital colonization your data your entire uh, data of say indians personal data or these things are stored somewhere in some other country some server okay even though we trust them if they do not keep up this trust then they may take this data analyze the sentiments of india these things indians and all these things so again this may be vulnerability may come and to the country as a whole so people are suggesting that the trust servers that is called the perimeter security trust server the cloud servers why google why not an our own country uh, service providers in clouds are there they may be more reliable than the others and government have a control on this so there comes the society or the administration okay technology is not the thing main thing is that how you can regulate the operations of these service providers if it is within your jurisdiction that is within the scope of govt of india they may be more trustworthy okay and there is a less scope of Uh, digital colonization or these things 
that's why people are scared of uh, sometimes putting very uh, important data on cloud drives and other okay they keep it in the safe in their local pen drive then in cloud and not only google it may be true for anybody but if they play really trustworthy service provider then you can put it but again no all these things have a political angle okay we have to think from this there are uh, critics there are analyzer they are analyzing what may be in future after 50 years all data is there so they may do the data analysis and use it and that is happening also not that that it is not happening in some uh, cloud service providers are very trustworthy some are not if the server is in china for example will you trust how much you will trust their gopt of india or indians will trust it here the, there comes the psychological barrier political things are coming okay so nobody can certify that this one is trust Okay, thank you so much, sir. With this, I'd like to wind up the question and answer round. Yeah. Uh, we are really honored to have you amid us, sir. This is what I'm repeating again and again. We are really highly honored to have you amid us. It was indeed a very rich and a healthy sharing experience with a lot of positive inputs and outputs. Uh, we are almost uh, heading towards the end of today's webinar. Now I'd like to invite Sukanya Boro, a SPIDA student representative, of class nine uh, to propose the vote of thanks. Over to you, Sukanya. A warm and graceful evening to one and all present here. It's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution of everyone. I, Sukanya Boro, on behalf of the Vides members, first of all, extend my most sincere gratitude to the Almighty for making today's event a successful one. With the blessings of the Almighty, the session went on smoothly. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to our honorable speaker, Sir S. K. Sinha, for spending his valuable time with us and enlightening us with his valuable talks. A special thanks to our respected principal, Sister Amelia, for standing as the pillar of strength and giving us this wonderful opportunity to update ourselves regarding proper and safe use of the internet. I would also li like to take the privilege of, of thanking Father Santosh for helping us have this webinar through Zoom app. It is Father's constant help and support that helped us to conduct this webinar smoothly. My sincere thanks goes to Mem Prerna for anchoring the program and Sir Uttam for managing the technical side. My hearty thanks goes to the Vides teachers in charge for their support and guidance. Last but not the least, I extend my gratitude to my fellow mates for maintaining the decorum of the webinar. We value each and every moment and the experiences that we have gained today. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, Sukanya. Thank you all from my side. Namaste. Thank you so much, sir. But do be with us. Do be with us for some more okay. minutes. Okay. Okay. Now I'd like to invite Sister Mary Alexander, the Vice Principal of St. Joseph Convent High Secondary School, page four, to kindly lead the closing prayer, as prayer is the most important part to start as well as end any event. So over to you, Sister Mary. As this webinar, on online safety for emerging students come to an end. We want to thank and honor the name of God, our loving Father. Thank you, dear God, for the enriching time you have given us. For the chance to learn about online safety from Professor S.K. Singha, for the valid information granted to us through him. Do bless Sir S.K. Singha, his family, and all his intentions abundantly. We thank you, beloved Heavenly Father, for our principal, Sister Emilia, 
who always think of the well-being of the students and provide them every opportunity to acquire knowledge and skill for their development and safety. May you bless her with your divine wisdom. God, our loving Father, we pray for our students, parents, teachers, and ourselves. May you always keep us and the entire human family under your loving care and protection and lead us always on the path of truth, justice, and brotherhood. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Mary. Uh, with this, we are almost to the end of today's webinar. It, is, it was indeed a fruitful one. Uh, firstly, we are grateful to the Almighty for blessing us with a wonderful network. My sincere gratitude goes to our honorable speaker, Professor S. K. Sinha, for spending his valuable time with us. It was really an enriching thank one. You, thank you, sister. Thank you so much, sir. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to our respected principal, Sister Emilia, for giving us this opportunity to conduct this webinar for our young students, although the initial planning was of Sister herself. So Sister Emilia, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. Uh, I do highly appreciate our parents for their constant support and their readiness to be with us always. My sincere gratitude goes to my colleague, Mr. Uttam Datta, who was there with us right from the day we started our planning of this webinar. So it is always a pleasure working with you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, last but not the least, I extend my warm wishes to my lovely audience, my dear young students and youth for attending the session. We all, my entire team, our entire team took effort uh, only to help you out to be safe online. Hope this session prove beneficial to each and every one of you. With this, I wrap up today's session. Stay safe, stay healthy, and do be safe online. Thank you so much. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Thank you all from my side again. Thank you. Hope to meet you. Thank you very much, sir, Thank for you. your valuable <laughs> time spent with us. It was indeed very in enriching and thought-provoking for us students. Okay. I'm sure they have learned a lot and they will make use of their social media in the best way possible. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you.